What is going on guys, it's Muddy Dwarfy here. Welcome back to another PS5 video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Spectre's major update here for the exploit. So he's released version 1.1 of his WebKit and kernel exploit chain. So essentially what he's come out and done here is two things. One, we have a elf loader that has been added into the exploit so it can now load elf files. So similar to how the BDJ exploit currently loads bin files where you send a payload, that is essentially what uh, Spectre's exploit is now capable of, except ELF files are like actual executable files like EXE files for the PS5 essentially. So that is a pretty big step forward. We also have a significant stability improvement added as well. It was about 30% and you know I've, I've loaded this exploit so many times, the original version, and you know pretty much 9 times out of 10 it would crash. Whereas here you can see the stability has been improved to about 80 to 90%. So it's significantly more stable than it was before. So let's go ahead and switch over first of all to the PS5 and give this a try. So first of all, if we head on to settings, we're going to head to the network settings. Of course, we're going to go to settings, set up an internet connection, select your network with the options button and go to advanced settings. We're going to head down to DNS settings and change it to manual. And then, of course, we're going to set up Al Azov's DNS address, or one of them anyway. So this one will do, which is 165.227.83.145. So we'll just pop that in there. You can also use 192.241.221.79. And we'll hop on there, connect up to that DNS. And then, of course, from there, we can head up to the user guide. And we can load the user guide, and that should take us to Al Azov's DNS. Okay, so we hit the left trigger twice. And then we bring up the URL redirector and we'll just go to es7in1.site, the same website I showed you guys before for the original version. And we'll head to PS5 and load the debug settings. So you can see here down at the bottom, it says we're on version 1.01. .01. We've, uh, we've got the credits down there as well. The flow, Spectre, Chendo Chap, Null Pointer. We click OK here. Uh, we've got Slayer's Gore VPSX Dev, Flats. Uh, not Zeko Shao and uh, Socratic Bliss and Lori. So credit to those guys. So as you can see here, we get to launching Elf Loader. So it looks like this succeeded on the first try. So this really shows you the stability improvements that, that has been made here to this exploit. So yeah, launching Elf Loader now, port 9020. So it still enables the debug settings like it did before. However, we also now have launching the Elf Loader on port 9020. So just like with the BDJ exploit that loads the bin loader on port 9019, we have an elf loader here from Spectre on 9020. So you can inject the payload in the same way. So in the actual exploit files, there's also been a Python script added for sending the elf files remotely to the console. So of course, it's better to use like a PS4 payload injector because it's just quicker and easier that way. But you have the option to do it through command line through a Python script now built into the actual exploit files. So I'm using Netcat GUI version 1.2. And of course, I'm just going to enter the PS5's IP address in here and change the port number to 9020. Now, at the time of recording, there's not any payloads that are out right now. However, there's probably going to be an FTP payload. So, you know, if by the time I'm editing this video, if there is an FTP payload, I'll show you guys that right here. Basically, you just drag the payload into the payload file path and you click inject payload. And if we switch back over to the PS5, you can see here it says elf header malformed terminating connection because of course that was the FTP payload for the BDJ exploit that I tried to load here, which isn't going to work. You need an actual proper elf file, one that's configured for this exploit, uh, which we don't currently have. But again, this exploit doesn't require a Blu-ray disc. So the setup is a lot easier doing it through the web kit. So yeah, this will probably be the preferred way to load FTP from now on. So yeah, that is essentially what we've got going on right there. So stay tuned for my next video because I am going to be covering some other pretty cool things that you can do on the PS5, like a debug setting shortcut, like the ability to also basically bring the web browser back to the PS5 by having a permanent notification that you can use to access whatever site you want, as well as also covering a PS4 whitelist, which essentially allows you to unblock PS4 games that are typically not allowed to run on the PS5 because they're not officially supported for backwards compatibility on the PS5, but you can basically unblock them and allow them to run anyway. So we'll be checking all of that stuff out in the next video. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.